Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. My name is Samuel Genus, and I want to welcome you to Jesus Church. I want to start this conversation by sharing with you an experience that I had on my way home uh, from work uh, today. Uh, I went to the gas station to get some gas and there was an elderly man out there singing and preaching the gospel. And so I, after I got my gas, I pulled up alongside him and uh, I just went out and took some pictures of him and I just listened uh, to what he was saying. And the Lord was ministering to me as this man was talking to ministering to those who was passing by, coming to get gas and those who were going into the store to get some liquor or whatever they was doing. Um, but the Lord reaffirmed in my spirit that doing ministry is not as complicated as we uh, make it out to be. And so today I want to challenge you and encourage you uh, and let you know that, brothers and sisters, it's time uh, for us to share the gospel. It's time for us to share the gospel. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says this. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, during that time, there was a lot going on between there was a lot of animosity between the Jews and the Romans. Uh, you had issues with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. You had the zealots. You know, you had Jewish people who were becoming Hellenized. Uh, you had people who were turning away from the law of God. You had, you know, leaders of the synagogue who uh, wasn't really representing God the way they should. And uh, in the midst of all of that, here comes Jesus. And he preaches, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit to you that even in our day today, we have a lot going on. We have racial tension. We have police brutality. We have political issues going on. We have brown water in Flint, Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. We got, you know, you know, just issues, just a lot of tension going on. We got, you know, this gay agenda that's, that's just, you know, moving like a freight train. Uh, we got, you know, just international issues. We got threats of terrorism and we got threats of the economy. You know, uh, people say, you know, the economy is growing. Then you got other people saying, you know, you know, we're 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 due for another setback and another collapse and all these kinds of things. And, you know, we got a high divorce rate both outside the church and within the church. And we got phony preachers and phony prophets and, you know, so many children are leaving the church as they're getting older. They're going to college and losing their faith or they never had faith at all. And we just got all this stuff going on. We got a bunch of black men who's getting arrested and going into prison, you know, just an unreasonable amount of, of incarceration among black men. We got all these issues with people's health and diabetes and and uh, high blood pressure and whatnot. And in the midst of all of that, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is expecting us to preach the same thing. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But that's not all Jesus did. Let's go to verse 18. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In other words, follow me and I will make you part of the solution. You see, some people are part of the problem because they are a sinner. And some people are part of the problem because they are idle Christians warming some pew in some religious building or so distracted by the cares of this life. And Jesus is saying, you need to follow me. I know you got a job, but you need to follow me. I know you got bills to pay, but you need to follow me. There's something bigger going on. There's a spiritual battle going on. And I need you to follow me because I need you to become a fisher of men. I need some people on the earth who's going to preach righteousness and let their light shine so that people can be drawn to my father, which is in heaven. Jesus is saying, look, I'm not going to do all the preaching by myself. Jesus is saying, I want to recruit people. 
Jesus saying, I, I need the help of other humans. And so he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And Jesus is saying the same thing today. There are people in your life that God is bringing in your life that you need to follow so that you can become a fisher of men. I know you have a job. I know you have bills to pay. I know you got a 401k. I know you got a retirement that you're trying to store for. I know you have a wife to take care of and children to take care of and grandchildren to take care of and, and all these things. But understand that there's a spiritual battle going on. There's something happening that is bigger than all of us. And Jesus wants us to be a part of that solution. He wants us to play a role in helping to bring people to him. He wants us not to get caught up in all of the side chatter. He wants us to focus and follow him so that we can become fishers of men. Let's keep going. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Uh, I'm sorry, John chapter 21 and uh, verse 15. John chapter 21, I had the wrong scripture there, and verse 15. Let's find out what Jesus says to Peter after he rose from the dead. John 21 and verse 15, listen to this. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, then tend my sheep. He said to him on a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than this fish, these fishes? Do you love me more than your career? Do you love me more than sports? Do you love me more than your 401k? Do you love me more than your 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 entrepreneurial uh, uh, ideas. Do you love me more than these? Because we're living in a time, ladies and gentlemen, where Satan will use all these things to distract us from fulfilling the call of God upon our life. And, and if and now watch this now, if you are a soldier, you have a position to play. And when you don't play your position, you make it easier for the enemy to advance. Yes, there's a danger in not fulfilling your role in the kingdom of God. When you don't fulfill your role, when you don't fulfill the call of God upon your life, you make it easier for Satan to creep into your home. When you don't fulfill the call of God upon your life, you make it easier for Satan to creep into the community and to advance into the community. When you don't fulfill the role of God upon your life, you make it easier for Satan to advance in politics. When you don't fulfill the call of God upon your life, you make it easier for Satan to advance within the religious arena. So there's a danger, ladies and gentlemen, when we do not fulfill the call of God upon our life. Will Jesus find faith on the earth when he returns? Will he find people who's holding up the bloodstained banner? Will he find people who's speaking the truth in love? Will he find people who's preaching the gospel in the midst of this dark world? Or will he simply find you on the basketball court? Will he simply find you on the football court? Will he find you in the barbershop talking about sports rather than talking about the kingdom of God and about repentance? Will he find you at this business meeting trying to figure out how to make more money rather than trying to help save souls in this dark world? Peter, do you love me more than these? Are you prepared to preach the gospel? Are you going to do the things that God is calling you to do in the midst of all of this? I'm challenging you to share the gospel and to be part of the solution. Let's keep going. Let's go to uh, <clears throat> Second Timothy, chapter four. Second Timothy, chapter four. And we're going to start at verse one. Second Timothy, chapter four and verse one. Listen to this. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead 
and by his appearing in his kingdom. Verse two, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke and exhort with complete patience and teachings. Why? Because the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. There's a lot going on around us. Yes, we know there's some greedy preachers out here. We know there's phony preachers. We know there's some false prophets and false apostles. But look, we can't just sit in the corner and complain. It's time for us to do what Jesus is calling us to do. Preach the word. Rebuke, reprove with all long suffering. Let people know that there's a better way. Let people know, warn the people of what's going on around us. We can't just sit in this little huddle in our houses. We can't just sit in this little huddle behind the four walls of some religious building. We can't just, you know, have this little private Facebook group where we just talk about things. No, God is calling us to be fishers of men. That's why that individual mindset doesn't work in the kingdom of God. That I'm just going to stay home and just just do me. No, that's 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 from Satan. That is not the mind of Christ. Jesus is calling us together. Why? Because there's work that we got to do. There's work that he's calling us to do. Look at verse five. It says, as for you, always be sober minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. You see, some of you want to shepherd the flock, <laughs> But you won't allow the spirit of evangelism to work through you. So you end up. There is no flock. <laughs> you see, Jesus said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. How is he going to bring that through the spirit of evangelism? How is he going to do that by us going out into the highways and the hedges and compelling them to come? Jesus is calling you. He's calling us to do the will of God. He doesn't want us sitting on the sidelines. Some of you aged women out there, Jesus is saying, look, the aged women ought to teach the young women how to be how to love their husbands, how to keep the house and love their children. Jesus doesn't want you sitting on the sidelines. He wants you to work with these young ladies. Don't sit and complain. Call them and gather them together and educate them. God just doesn't want these old men sitting on the sidelines and and talking about these young men who got their pants sagging and talking about these young men who's going in and out of prison. No, God wants you to get up. He wants you to go alongside them and help educate these young men, evangelize them, share, set aside time, be intentional. Be intentional, just like you intentionally go to work, just like you intentionally put gas in your car, just like you intentionally cut your grass, you intentionally go to the supermarket, you intentionally get your hair cut. Set aside time to intentionally share the gospel. Set aside time to intentionally love somebody. Set aside time to intentionally disciple someone. Set aside time to intentionally fellowship with the saints so that iron can shop in iron and that your faith can be uh, charged up so that when you leave from the congregation, you can go into the world, into the marketplace and do the things that God is calling you to do. I'm praying that God will light your fire. I'm praying that God will move you and, and shake you up. Hallelujah. He doesn't want us to be lukewarm. He wants us to be on fire for him. He wants us to have a zeal according to knowledge. He doesn't want us to be lazy. He doesn't want us to be complacent. And he doesn't want us to be overly concerned about the cares of this life. The Bible says no man that goeth to war entangles himself with the cares of this life. And some of you are so entangled with the cares of this life that you haven't led nobody to Christ in a long time. Some of you are have been entangled by the cares of this life that you don't even know what it feels like to pray for somebody anymore. Some of you are entangled by the cares of this life that you don't even share the gospel. You don't even intentionally share the gospel. And what do you what do you think is going to happen to your community if 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 believers act like you? What do you think is going to happen to your community if there is no one with faith in the community? If everybody just is just, you know, just sitting on the sidelines and waiting, I am encouraging you to get up and be about your father's business. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? 
Have not you seen enough bloodshed? Have not you seen enough statistics, negative statistics? Haven't you seen enough bad marriages? Is there not a cause? Have not you heard the false preachings that are circulating in your community, within your own family? Is there not a cause? Can't you see your brothers and your sisters serving Satan? And if they were to die, they would go to hell. Is there not a cause? I want to encourage you. It's time. Now is the time to preach the gospel. Now is the time to get around some seasoned men and women who can disciple you and coach you and teach you the things of God so that you can fulfill the call of God upon your life. This is not the time to be ease in Zion. This is not the time to be ease in Zion. This is not the time to go. Well, I'm going to go on vacation and I'm going to do this and I'm going to go get me this, you know, villa. And I'm going to, uh, you know, and I'm going to, you know, invest in this and I'm going to build up my 401k. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Yes, my brothers and sisters. There is a cause. Yes, there is a cause. And Jesus is still in the saving business. Jesus is still. It is not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. Jesus is still looking for some faithful men and women. Who's going to accept the call and share the gospel, live the gospel, receive the gospel and live the gospel, but also share the gospel. There is a cause. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that you will do the will of God for your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. <clears throat> thank you for saving us. Thank you for pulling us out of the fire. Thank you for rescuing us. Thank you for having someone pray for us. Thank you for putting people in our lives to show us the right way. But now, Lord, it's our turn. It's our turn to pray for somebody else. It's our turn to sacrifice for someone else. It's our turn, our turn to set aside time to help bring others to you. Father, help us not to get lazy or complacent. Light our fire. Motivate us. Help us to discern the situation that we are in. Help us to see the need. Help us to recognize that the harvest is plenteous. The labors are few. And so, Lord, we're praying that the Lord of the harvest will send labors. Lord, I'm praying that you will awaken your people. I'm praying that you will take the scales off their eyes, that they will see the work that needs to be done. Father, I'm praying that they would uh, alter their to do list. And make sure that they are putting you in your right perspective on their list. Father, I pray that we will see the need. And that we will meet that need. That we will walk by faith and not by sight. Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory. I thank you in advance for the souls that will be saved as we do your will. The marriages that will be mended as we do your will. The relationships between parents and their children that will be mended as we do your will. The people that would recognize your love as we do your will. Father, we th I praise you in advance for how you're going to strengthen us and, and build up our faith as we do your will and see your glory revealed through various situations. Father, I thank you in advance for the opportunities that you're going to bring uh, where we can pray for others, where we can visit people in the hospital, where we can visit people in prison. I, I thank you in advance for the people that we'll be able to minister to at the gas station, minister to at the supermarket, minister to in the park, minister to in our own subdivision. Father, I thank you <coughs> for how you're going to use us in this day and hour. For for this reason, we are here for this reason. We are alive for this reason. We have been born again. Help us not to forget it. Help us to make full proof of our ministry. Anoint us afresh. Be glorified in our life. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.